Hello again. My name is Stu Kenneborough, and this is the class. These are the classes on Foundations for Life, and we have been talking about salvation. And uh, last time we met and talked about this, or at least I talked about it with you, um, we talked about the concept of security of salvation and how important that was in the life of a believer. And so we ended where we were getting ready to talk about the three parts of the Godhead that are involved in the whole aspect of security. And so that's what we're going to be talking about in this lesson. So the first would be security through the Father. We're going to look at John 5, 24. Very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. So what that verse tells us is God, uh, God the Father's statement that if you uh, speak his name and if you have eternal life, you will not be judged. You don't have to worry about ever losing that relationship. Also, God has infinite power to save and to keep us. John 10, 29. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. Now, this is Jesus talking to the people about those who are saved. And he says very clearly, God's the one that does it. He is infinitely powerful. Nobody is going to thwart him in this process. He has got this covered. So this is what Jesus is saying. And then there's the concept of infinite love from from the father romans 5 8 but god demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners christ died for us see we don't have to worry about god coming to his senses at some point and saying you know what those people down there are just horrible <laughs> they're horrific and i am going to change my plan um, I'm going to do something else. What that scripture tells us is that God loved us even when, even when we were horrible, even when we were horrific, even when we wanted nothing to do with him. God loved us and he chose to save us. So that's security through the Father. Now, security through Christ. Romans 8.1 Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. So basically what that's saying is that Christ had or paid what they call a substitutionary death for you. He substituted himself for you. He paid the penalty for your sin by accepting that sin on himself. No condemnation because of what Jesus did. And then uh, in security, there's the idea of the resurrection. Let's look at Ephesians 2, 6. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. So basically, this is telling us that we have been raised up with Christ. So it's not just that God's paid the penalty for us. We have had the same resurrection that Jesus had. We have the same privileged position of being there with Jesus, with God in our salvation. And then there's this whole idea that we've talked about in some of our other classes about advocacy, advocacy in heaven. Hebrews 9.24, take a look at that. For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with human hands that was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself, now to appear for us in God's presence. Basically, that's telling us that Christ is there. He entered this heaven made for this specific purpose, and he now appears for us in God's presence. And so he is our advocate in heaven. 
He is the one that's going to make sure that the work that was started in you is going to be completed and you are going to be saved as a result of that. And then he intercedes for us. In John 17, that entire chapter, we won't read the whole chapter, but in John 17, the talk there is Jesus prays for his disciples, for those who gave him, uh, I mean, for those who God gave him, and he prays on their behalf to the Father. So that's a beautiful scripture to read that has Jesus basically saying, um, I am going to stand with you. I am going to support you. I am going to do what is necessary to ensure that you are with me forever. So this is what God, uh, this is what Jesus does. And then we have security through the spirit. So in the spirit, we have some very different looking things. John 1, 13. They are reborn, not with a physical birth, resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. Now, this is the idea that we have a divine nature. Wow, because the Spirit resides in us. And as a result of that, we are regenerated with a new nature that gives us this constant idea or constant concept of security because God is right here with us through all of this. And in his indwelling us, Romans 5, 5. Let's read that. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. So this is further testimony to the fact that he is indwelling us. And as a result of that, we have this divine, new, regenerated nature. And then there's this aspect of baptism. Let's take a look at Galatians 5.5. 5. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. So what this is telling us is we have adorned ourselves with Christ. We have the Spirit as a part of us because of baptism in Christ. And then there's this idea of sealing. It's kind of a stamp of ownership. Look at Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so that we would praise and glorify him. Well, that is a tremendously powerful verse that talks about the fact that because of the Spirit's work in us, because of God's love for us, we are going to be sealed forever. And sealing is like when you take the when the king would take that letter that he wanted to give to somebody and give it an official um, um, uh, notification. So he would put wax on the on the envelope and he would take his seal and he would bang it on that envelope with his own unique seal. And anybody who broke that seal would be in trouble unless they were the one that was identified as the one to receive that letter. And so we are sealed. We have the stamp of God on our lives and on our hearts. And nobody can open that seal except for God. Nobody can get in the way of this because God is the one that has done it. So there are sometimes questions about the concept of eternal security. And I wanted to play a short um, audio clip for you from this wonderful pastor named Vernon McGee, Dr. McGee. And so please enjoy this little video, um, I mean this little audio, where he will talk about the idea of eternal security. I am having a discussion with my brother-in-law concerning the issue of the eternal security of the believer. Could you explain what you believe on this issue? Well, let me read to you a scripture that to me it 
is absolutely one that makes it clear that you have a salvation that is eternal and it is secure. He says here, he, and I'm reading now, by the way, from 1 John 5th chapter, verse 12. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Now, you see that if you have the Son, you have life. If you don't have the Son, you don't have life. It's just as simple as that, by the way. Now, he goes on to say this. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And he says that not only to believe, but that you can know that you have eternal life in Christ Jesus. Now, how do you know it? Well, you know it because God has said it. God has made it very clear that you have an eternal salvation. Now, today we hear a great deal of being born again. Well, I wish that had been translated. I've been saying for years that where it says you are born again, actually in the Greek, the word for again is anothen. And it doesn't mean actually again. It means from above. And there are two births, the birth from below the human birth, the birth from above, which is by the Holy Spirit, born of the Spirit of God. And born again, not of corruptible seed, Peter said, but of incorruptible, of the Word of God that liveth and abideth forever. Now, if you turn to the Word of God and read as we've had here, if you have the Son, you have life. If you don't have the Son of God, you don't have life. Have you been born from above? Has the Word of God been brought to you that you now trust the Lord Jesus Christ? Paul says in Romans, Ye are the sons of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Faith in Jesus Christ? Yes, that's all. You mean the works don't enter in? No, sir. It's by faith in the Lord Jesus. So, you can hear, and in, uh, in that great, he's, a, he's got a wonderful voice. And here's all, by the way, if you're interested in, in some of his other teaching, there is a ton of it online on YouTube. You can just look up Vernon McGee, and they've got these little short clips all over the place um, about different topics. It's wonderful stuff. So the concept of election then offers us three really important things. Three really important things. The first, an assurance of salvation. We know that we are saved. We are going to be saved forever because it is a work of God. We have confidence for daily living. We know that this is work that is done by God. This is not something we're trying to do on our own. And it also promotes personal evangelism. Now, this is an interesting point that some find fault with. They say, well, if God is the one who chose me, then what's the point of sharing Christ with anybody? If God chooses them, they're chosen. So what difference does it make? Well, it plays out in God's plan for salvation, that we would be able to be used by God to help someone understand this story of salvation, to share the word with them so that their heart might be tender and allow God to work um, in, their, in their lives. And so it also provides us an opportunity to be a part of this glorious, amazing family of God here on earth until such time as we all join him in heaven. It's a better place for us to be, to be a part of this, to be with you guys and with anybody who is searching for God, who is seeking to live a life that, that honors him. That's the place. Those are the folks I want to hang out with. Those are the people that are fun to be with. And so it promotes that personal evangelism from that perspective. Well, that covers what we wanted to talk about regarding election. Next time we get together, we're going to talk about sanctification. Great topic. You're going to enjoy it. And so uh, I will say thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Uh, my name is Stu Kenneborough, and I will look forward to communicating with you again soon.